All right, looks like we're good to go. We got a good crowd here that's joined us. Um, we're streaming right now live on Facebook and on YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Kevin Gilmore with the National Weather Service New Orleans Baton Rouge office located in Slidell, Louisiana. We're going to be doing an update on now Hurricane Ida as the storm has uh, shown some uh, very intense strengthening over the last uh, several hours in the Northwest Caribbean. And we're going to talk about also what kind of impacts we're going to be expecting across the area, across Southeast Louisiana and Southern Mississippi. Uh, talk about some uh, potentially life-threatening and significant impacts that's going to be expected across the region. So uh, we got a very busy next few days here. Uh, we're going to get through it. Uh, we seem like we go through these, seems like too many times, but we'll get through it. And we're going to make sure that we make, uh, we make that everyone is going to be as safe as possible as we get through this storm. So let's go ahead and talk about all the new things that we know right now. So I'm going to jump right real quick to show you what's going on behind me here. This is the uh, satellite loop. So if I jump in over to it, of Ida. And as a meteorologist perspective, I, I like to kind of give an analysis, but I don't want to go <laughs> any too deep into uh, some of the lingo that us, you know, meteorologists like to nerd out about. But uh, Ida is currently right about where you see that island, about right there, uh, probably kind of towards the center of this whole big convection or this whole big circle you see. That's called the Isle of Youth, which is just a small island on the western tip of Cuba. And in a meteorologist's perspective, looking at this satellite imagery for a tropical system or one that's strengthening, this is a very healthy system. It's what we would call very symmetric and has what's called a CDO or central dense overcast which means there's a lot of thunderstorm activity, which is depicted by the brighter colors that you see on the screen, which means that if you get that thunderstorm activity on top of the low center, it's a very healthy storm. And usually we don't really have much, if any, vertical wind shear that's going to be influencing or, in, or uh, going against its development. So this system, uh, like I said, from a meteorologist perspective, looks uh, very healthy and is likely going to continue to strengthen as it continues towards the Northwest. Uh, Louisiana is kind of the top part of the screen, uh, as you can see in the middle top part of the screen, where we're dealing with some local heavy rain here today from another disturbance. It's not technically really too much tropical, but it is kind of giving us some heavier rainfall across the area. Uh, of course, the rain we're seeing today is not technically associated with Ida itself. Uh, this uh, rain will get out of the way by the time that this system heads more towards the Northwest. So we want to go ahead and uh, jump straight into it here. First, I know we have a lot of viewers uh, watching today and um, people need to know what we do here first. Uh, we're the National Weather Service New Orleans office. Uh, we're one of 122 offices in the United States. Uh, for here, we cover portions of Southeast Louisiana and Southern and coastal Mississippi. We're surrounded by other offices as well. For Lake Charles, we have uh, folks to our west. Uh, that's a National Weather Service office in Lake Charles, where they got a Facebook and Twitter as well. National Weather Service Jackson, Mississippi to our north, and National Weather Service Mobile to our east. So, if you have families and friends that family and friends that live in those areas, or you're watching from other adjacent offices near the area, just be aware that when we're talking about local effects. We're going to be talking about area uh, effects that are pertaining to our local area of Southeast Louisiana, and Southern Mississippi. So please follow our neighbors if you live in, anywhere near there or you have family and friends that live there. Uh, there's other offices across the United States, but for this one, we want people to be kind of, we're going to be kind of hitting a little bit harder on towards our local area when it comes to impacts for the system. So here is the latest one o'clock central daylight time update on Hurricane Ida. Uh, again, Ida is now a hurricane. It is a minimal hurricane and winds of maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. The movement still continues off to the northwest at 15 miles per hour. And we're going to see that movement continue uh, all the way through this uh, weekend. We're going to see it cross the western tip of Cuba tonight and early tomorrow and emerge into the southeast gulf. Uh, late tonight, and early tomorrow. And then it's going to continue off to the northwest and conditions unfortunately are looking quite favorable for more development and it could actually become a major hurricane by early Sunday morning. Now as the system continues off towards the northwest it is now currently and has been currently um, uh, predicted to make landfall as a major hurricane across southeast Louisiana. Of course we do not want people to pay attention to the center exact point of that cone. There's going to be times it may wobble a little left little right but people have been asking a lot of questions too about model guidance and how is it looking. Well, actually it's not looking half bad. This forecast from the National Hurricane Center looks very good. 
And that's another thing I wanted to mention too. I, I'm not going to be showing any model guidance. I know that a lot of people are passing along model guidance across social media, um, on TV, everywhere. That, that's fine to look at it, but we here at the National Weather Service message this from the forecast that the experts at the National Hurricane Center produces. So this is an official forecast from the National Hurricane Center where there is just an amazing staff of experts that uh, work there to go through and analyze this model guidance that some people show you. So don't make plans off of model guidance. Uh, you have to make plans over official guidance that you see right in front of you. And for this case, as you see, a large part of our area is in the cone. And this cone stretches all the way from coastal Mississippi to just a little bit near or slightly west of Lake Charles, Louisiana. So this is a large area of potential impacts we're worried about. So keep that in mind as we go through uh, the day. Now, what we're thinking of the uh, landfall time will be around Sunday evening, Sunday, kind of maybe late Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. And then going up with the center of the storm, kind of going up near the Mississippi River. So we're going to see some of the worst impacts is going to be near the center and to the east. And it could be well far away from the center of the storm as well. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that here coming up. Now, I just kind of hit this slide before I even, uh, just as I just mentioned it, but this is to kind of talk about the cone a little bit more here uh, about why we do the cone. Uh, just remember that impacts both within the cone and outside the cone exist. So we may have uh, impacts well outside the cone I just showed. There, there's already high, uh, high surf possibilities all the way across Alabama and Florida coastline. So even further north as the storm decays and heads up towards uh, Jackson, Mississippi's area or up towards close to Tennessee and Alabama, there could be uh, uh, inland impacts. So just be aware of that at the cone. Don't pay attention to that direct middle line so much. We want people to look at that cone and if you're any, in any of that solid white or hatched white color, you have the potential for impacts from the system and you need to be paying attention to the latest forecast. So going ahead here, this is kind of the latest update we have here as, as of late this morning, early afternoon. We also have hurricane watches in effect almost for the entire area, all of southeast Louisiana and southern Louisiana. Now these have been pushed further inland now. Now this is now a little bit towards the Florida parishes, north of I-1012. And now we actually have a tropical storm watch as well for a tier of counties further north, which include, includes Macomb, Woodville. Uh, getting towards Poplarville and then further areas off towards Mobile as well. So expect these to become warnings as we get through later today, potentially later today, as the storm's going to get closer. So watch this for now, which means just heads up, make sure you're getting your plans prepared. There's your impacts and safety. When we talk about hurricane and tropical storm watches, that means the potential for hurricane force wind gusts or wind sustained winds and tropical storm force winds in some of these areas as the storm makes landfall. Now, forecast wind threat. Now, we like to show this. This is our th hurricane threat graphics that we like to show uh, from the National Hurricane Center, which actually kind of depicts a little bit better where we're seeing that extensive wind risk with the system. Now, you see, if you're anywhere in that purple color, now, it's very important you know where you are in a map. If you know your county and your parish and where you live, you should be able to determine, hey, I live near Lafayette or I'm you know, near New Orleans or I live in Baton Rouge. You're in that extreme threat color. And what that means is the potential for significant to catastrophic wind damage in the area that we're talking about widespread power outages is going to be extremely possible in these areas. Tree damage. Um, Potential even for some structural damage, especially closer to the coast as you get towards southeast Louisiana from the system. Prepare for power outages. If you're in that purple, just prepare for power outages. For red areas, we can see some scattered tree damage with some power outages as well. Probably not as widespread, but definitely if you follow that track north, you may still see it. Even areas in the orange colors, you can still see some uh, wind impacts, especially if there's any heavier rain bands. Those heavier rain bands have a tendency to really sh uh, pick up a lot of wind and it transfers down to the surface and anywhere closer to the center of the storm as well, near uh, what would be at that time the eye wall when it makes landfall and continues north. That's where you're going to have a lot of those extreme wind possibilities. So I'll say it again, if you're in that purple color, expect power outages, tree damage, structural damage will be very possible, especially towards the coastal areas. Please take this very seriously, and if you live in an area, if, you're, uh, if you don't have a kit or anything, now is the time to do preparations. Do not wait until Sunday. We're telling people to get this done today and tomorrow, at the latest tomorrow, but by Sunday, it's, it's going to be too late by that point, so keep that in mind as you get uh, preparations underway. 
Another risk with this system is going to be storm surge, and it's going to be significant and potentially life-threatening as well. We're talking about 7 to 11 feet inundation from Morgan City, Louisiana, all the way to Ocean Springs, Mississippi. 4 to 6 feet in Lake Pontchartrain, and 3 to 5 in Lake Maurepas. So this actually increased as of earlier this morning. Now, this we are currently under a storm surge watch for across all of these coastal areas of coastal Mississippi and coastal southeast Louisiana and around the surrounding tidal lakes. Be aware that this could turn into a storm surge warning coming up, and there could be some changes to these values. We're just going to have to kind of fine-tune that and coordinate with the National Hurricane Center, and we'll be sure to let you know if there's any changes or upgrades to these products as they come across. So if you live in a flood-prone area that typically sees flooding from higher than normal tides, you definitely will see some significant inundation. So keep that in mind that this is going to be a significant problem for many people around the area. And we want you to really pay attention here with the latest forecast. So what are the impacts from storm surge? If you're kind of wondering, we're talking about large areas covered with deep water due to storm surge flooding. We can sometimes see structural damage to buildings and some washing away due to the battering waves, which carries a lot of energy with it and can be just as destructive as winds. And we can say locations can be uninhabitable for extended period, which is very true, especially when we're talking about that near coastal area. So Terrebonne, Lafouche Parish, going down to Plaquemines Parish and St. Bernard, those coastal areas that are going to be facing the Gulf of Mexico, and of course areas possibly a little bit further to the west, will be really susceptible to the most extreme impacts of storm surge. Now we're going to back it up just a little bit, and I know we have a flash flood watching today, but this is actually in effect for uh, just today and not for the storm itself. So this is a flash flood watch because outside today we actually have a lot of showers and thunderstorms and some flash flooding going on. So this is what's actually going on outside. Be aware that we will likely issue another flash flood watch when the storm gets closer, but we don't want people to be too confused on the, uh, the differences of what's going on. This is an effect for today, but do expect that there will be more flash flood watches as the storm approaches. So now that's talking about today. Now let's talk about the storm. This is storm total QPF or what's called quantitative precipitation forecast or just rainfall totals between Sunday around early in the morning all the way through Tuesday morning. So this is cumulative of the entire storm's path through the area. Now, right now we're calling for around 8 to 16 inches of heavy rainfall. Some of that could be locally higher. Uh, we may see some areas seeing upwards of 20 inches. The reason for this is going to be because as the storm makes its current projected trajectory towards just slightly to the west of our area, so near Baton Rouge, areas to the right of that eye wall, and then we're going to see south to north oriented bands that are going to be training and could possibly just stay over the same spot repetitively. And that's why we're thinking there could be a possibility of a lot higher numbers than what you're seeing here. This is more of just an aerial average total of what we're expecting. There could definitely be localized higher amounts all anywhere within this area. We're just thinking that the greatest risk right now is across southeast Louisiana, somewhere including Baton Rouge to Covington and New Orleans to Homa to Dibodeau, uh, getting close to Lafayette. That's that kind of area we're a little bit worried about. So let's see, we're going to jump back there. Um, I thought I had a slide there. It looks like I don't have that. But for the threat risk, what we're talking about, let me just back up there real quick. But that's going to be the area we're most significantly worried about. It's going to be southeastern Louisiana. Not so much as you get further north in the southern Mississippi. Now, for friends watching in central and southern Mississippi, you still have some significant rain impacts. However, it's not going to be as significant as we're expecting a little bit further south. It just depends on when those rain bands set up. And same for coastal Mississippi. The risk for heavy rainfall lowers the further east you go. And same with the center of the storm towards the west. So we're talking about our friends in Lake Charles may not really see too much in the way of rain out of this, but areas from like Lafayette all the way over to area, just about halfway part of coastal Mississippi, anywhere in between that area has the risk of seeing some significant flash flooding. Now another risk to mention too is going to be, now this threat is not as significant because typically with these hurricanes, when they make landfall, is we see these isolated weak tornadoes. And they're brief and small, but if you happen to get one, they can be locally damaging and be life-threatening as well. So this yellow area is what we call limited risk, or just what we're calling a potential for a few tornadoes near the center into the east as the storm makes landfall. That's pretty much our entire, what's called, our entire area that we cover of southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi. So depending on where the storm makes landfall, there will likely be a tornado watch issued at some portion of the area to the east of this, including the center to the east. And we may be having to issue some tornado warnings. So 
it's not mentioned here, but I, I do say that it, make sure you have a reliable way to receive warnings should they become required. But what I don't have here, what's really important to uh, mention right now, is if you have a NOAA weather radio, make sure you have fresh batteries in it. Because if you lose power, you'll lose the ability of getting these warnings. So make sure you have some type of a backup plan. If you, as I showed you earlier, those areas that have a likely case of losing power, you got to make sure you have a reliable way of receiving these warnings and more forecast information as the storm's making landfall. So make sure you have that plan. And here, <laughs> go ahead and jump into the next slide. That's what we're talking about. Get a plan. Have a disaster supply kit. I'm going to go ahead and say you should have done this already. If you haven't, do it now. Do it today or definitely do it by tomorrow. Make sure you have just a kit ready to go. Batteries are important. A flashlight, first aid kit, uh, cleaning supplies, anything like that. A cell phone charger or any type of like a portable charger. That's something I personally have, which is very, very helpful. And even have cash on hand in case there's just areas without power for a long time and you cannot get uh, cash like from an ATM. These are things to really consider about uh, here. Again, I'm giving everyone a timeline between today and tomorrow to get their preparations underway, especially if you're in some of that higher extreme area outlook in the wind threats. And keep your disaster kit fresh. From the previous update I was talking about as well that uh, I'm pretty sure everyone put a kit together last year when we were under the gun several, several times from several different storms. And for the, you may have a kit that was made last year, but you need to check it this year. Don't wait too late to open it up and realize, oh, my battery's and my flashlight's dead. Then you have no way to see anything when you lose your power. So go ahead and check now. Check today. Check when you get home from work later. Check tonight. Just go through your kit and make sure everything's ready to go. Make a list and say, well, I need to replace this. I need to add that. So let me just jump by the store real quick and get that real quick. Go ahead and do it now. Again, way ahead of the storm is what you want to think about. And then also, very importantly, please plan for your uh, pets. If you got dogs, uh, if you're thinking about evacuating, think about it. You need to take them to a safe place. Do not leave your pets behind. Think about them. Um, take them with you. Uh, remember that not all shelters accept pets, so that's why you got to call in advance. You got to plan way out in advance and determine where you need to take your pets. Do not leave them behind. Please think about your pets during this type of a situation. So we're going to jump back here, back to... The latest here from Hurricane Ida, again, uh, the current forecast, let me actually jump back here real quick and show you the current satellite imagery I was showing you as well. Showing Ida, again, if you kind of missed the beginning what I was talking about, um, the system is looking extremely healthy and may co continue to actually strengthen more as it crosses the western tip of Cuba. So we remain to be very concerned about this system as you should too, especially if you live in any vulnerable area of Southeast Louisiana and Southern Mississippi. And we're gonna be sure to really keep you posted as much as we can about when the storm comes closer to the area. We're gonna be posting frequent updates on Twitter and on Facebook. You can follow us on web, uh, our website too. We're posting all these graphics on our webpage. That's weather.gov forward slash New Orleans. So follow us there. That's where you can get point and click weather information for yourself. If you want to know any type of additional weather information or any additional product information, we're putting it there. Of course, you got us here on Facebook and Twitter where we're doing constant updates and we're doing these Facebook Live updates as well. But again, I'll say it one more time. Again, have plans in place today or tomorrow preferably today before the storm gets closer. The storm is looking likely this will be a major hurricane and cause significant life-threatening impacts across portions of southeastern Louisiana. So our job here is to make sure that you're prepared. And we're going to get through this and all that, and we're going to keep you updated. When we have more updates across the uh, coming across the board, we'll let you know. And we're probably going to do another Facebook Live possibly later today, if not today, very certainly we'll do a, probably more than one or two tomorrow as the storm gets a little bit closer and the storm will be probably in the southeast it'll be at that point in the southeast gulf of mexico so again we'll have a little bit of better higher confidence forecast as the storm gets closer naturally so we'll be able to provide you uh, with more information as it gets closer so um i think that's pretty much all i got here uh just prepare 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 that's the biggest thing the key takeaways uh damaging wind gusts uh potentially widespread power outages uh, uh, life-threatening storm surge, isolated tornadoes, and flash flooding are all going to be a significant risk with this system. Do not pay attention to that exact point where the storm is going. Don't look at the very center. Impacts could be well away from that center part, even outside of the cone. So have these preparations underway. Again, we're thinking Sunday and into Monday are going to be the two days that it's going to be one of those days you got to hunker down uh, and just let the storm roll through. And again, we'll kind of get through this together. So 
that's all I got here. Um, appreciate you joining. And like I said, I promise to do another update either later today or definitely tomorrow. Thanks for joining and take care.